Hey all, Lawrence from Express Unity here and today we are going to be looking at how we can sync our animations uh, in our multiplayer game. Now, it's actually really really simple so this might not be that long of a video. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to our player that we've got already in the scene um, <clears throat> and let's create a little animation for him. So let's get drag our animation tab down. Uh, let's create a new animation in a new folder called animation um, and then the first one we'll call idle. And this is basically nothing so we don't want to do anything in this one. So let's go and create a new clip and we'll call this one oops that's not what I wanted to do we'll call this one hop okay um, now what uh, what I want to do is we'll just animate a little little hopping uh, state for this so just looking Okay, so press the little record button and we'll, what we'll do is add component transform and we'll add the position, just our starting position here. Um, we could also just move it and then control Z and it'll do the same thing. So at around, uh, we'll, delete, we'll delete this bit at the one second mark, we don't want that. But at around point 0.5, we'll make the cube go up, and then we'll control, uh, we'll, we'll copy the first keyframe, and then at um, just do 115. We'll see what that looks like. Okay. Um, <clears throat> could probably be played a bit faster, so we'll just drag it in a little, uh, like so. I want the one where it comes down to be slightly faster. Yep. All right, so that's looking good. So let's stop the animation. Um, now I just want to apply that. And one thing that we want to add now, oh actually before we do, go to our animator and let's remove our animation tab. So in our animator, uh, we've already got the idle since it was the first animation we made, that's already set as default so that's good. So I want to make a new, um, make a new float and we'll just call this hop and then let's make a new transition over to hop and I want to have the exit time to 1 and then I want to make the condition whoops so the condition to hop I want it to be greater than point, uh, point 0.1 and the condition to idle I want it to be less than Point one, and this will have an exit time of one again, just so the animation's fully complete before we switch. Um, okay, so uh, in our player object, there is a new component with Photon Two. Well, actually, I'm not actually sure if it's new or not. I never really paid attention to it, but it is called Photon Animator View. If we add that to our game object we can actually sync our animations. So if we take a look here, we have hop. And so we can set this to discrete or continuous. Discrete is fine. Basically what it's going to do is sync this animation variable up with everybody else. So if I start the hop animation, then, uh, then uh, everyone will see me hop. Um, if it's uh, below zero or is zero, then the idle animation will play. So now what we want to do is a little bit of scripting in the player. 
and wherever we move over here let's just go ahead and make a new float um, we'll call it move and then we'll say equals to x plus y uh, x plus z sorry Basically what this will do is this will be above zero so long as both X and Z are pressed. If they're not pressed anymore, this will be zero, meaning that our animation won't play. Another thing we want to do is go ahead and make a private animator. We'll call it anim and then we'll say anim equals get component uh, animator. Okay, so then over here let's do something like anim.setFloat and the ID was hop and the value will be move so I think it was lowercase, let me just quickly look, yeah lowercase okay so I believe that is all we needed to do so that should now sync our animation just take another quick peek apply it, disable this object and we'll save and we'll build and run <coughs> there we go Alrighty, awesome. So let's open up both two windows. So this will be our test, test one, two, three. I'm not gonna load in the new map because we ended up having the those problems before. So we're just logging with one account. Um, okay, so join or create, and join or create. Countdown starts spawn over here and if I oh okay <laughs> so hmm. okay so we've got a bit of a problem here so I think oh we're actually taking damage because we move back and forth um Okay, let's go back to our player here. Because this isn't because this isn't an actual object. Um, yeah, because this is an actual object, moving the position up and down is giving us some problems. I'm just trying to think of what we can do instead. Um, okay, so let's do this. Let's go back to our hop animation and let's remove the keyframes and instead of um, sort of the position changing, we'll change our height. Uh, uh, make sure you're hitting the record. And so we'll change the Y and then Control Z. Oh, actually, so. So change that back to 1, so it's default, and then we'll go to around 20, change the height, and then we'll go to 0.25 and back. So if we play it, okay, so let's stop playing that animation, that should be saved, and we'll apply, oh actually no, we don't need to apply it, it's already applied. Uh, we also might need to sync the layer. Let me, let me remember. I can't remember if we needed to sync the layer. Um, we'll also make a transition to idle just in case. Um, okay, so <clears throat> I'll also just make it continuous just for now. Um, and we'll save it and give it a test. 
Basically what continuous does is it'll constantly sync the animated variable whereas uh, discrete will only change it for whenever the player actually animates. So it'll be more performant to use the other option but for now just to make sure everything's working. Oh, I should have actually disabled this player but we'll see. We We'll see. It should automatically remove because it's an unregistered uh, networked object. Alright, so play. And play. Alright, so that one dropped down, so it's got a bit of physics now. Which should mean our animation won't affect our position. So draw and create. Do you want to create? Okay, this one's not been removed, sadly, but let's see if... Okay, um... Okay, so, the animations are working. The... oh, actually, um... I believe we actually need to make it a observed component. So just like our photon transfer transform uh, view, we also need to put that into our photon view observed component. Uh, apply, and now that should work. Sorry, I forgot about that step. So save, build and run. Oh, I forgot to disable the player again. My bad. <clears throat> All right, play. Test, test one, two, three, log in. Journal create, journal create, time accounts down. And now we should start seeing animations on both screens. Okay, there we go little bit of a delay because of latency but you can see that now both will animate we go to this one animates on this screen animates on that screen if I stop moving he stops animating on both um, there's nothing no code when when we're moving backwards those numbers that we put in are in negatives and so uh, we haven't set any logic for it to animate there but you could easily um, make a running backwards animation but for now we move forwards we hop this, we'll go to this one, move forwards, we hop, sit visible on both screens. There we are. I hope um, this little basic uh, tutorial on animations will help you guys out a lot. Again, uh, this uh, synchronized parameters here, if you had multiple of uh, these options, you will want to um, make sure they're not disabled. Uh, I recommend putting it on discrete, I just had it on continuous just to make sure that it was all working. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. If you want to see more, uh, please do subscribe. Uh, it helps me out a lot. And just leave some comments down below in what you want to see next. Um, uh, like I said, I'm wanting to move on to some other stuff. Uh, it doesn't need to be networking, so you know, any anything. Just whatever you guys want to see, comment it below, and I'll see what I can do. Alrighty, I'll see you guys in the next video.